Hello, welcome to the first video on annelids, uh, the phylum Annelida. We're going to start with a bit of review. Um, just the concept of diploblasty versus triploblasty. So we've been looking at very small stuff so far, uh, with the exception of the Nemertians, which get very big. But um, when we look at a diploblastic organism like cnidarians, you can see that they've got the epidermis on the outside, the gastroderm on the inside, and those, o those two tissue layers, which are the only two tissue layers, the living layers, are se separated by the non-living mesoglea in the center, which gives structure and shape um, and keeps those two layers apart. And those enclose the gut cavity where food is processed. With a triploblastic organism, you have the epidermis and the gastrodermis and the gut, same things, inside and outside. And then they uh, have a mesoderm, which is a living layer of tissue on the in, um, in the middle of those two layers. Having a living tissue layer also allows for uh, the development of these compartments known as coelom. You won't need to know that, uh, but you'll see it written in um, biological writing quite often, coelom. But these compartments allow things like um, circulatory systems to form. Okay, and you can develop things, organs, Okay, so tissues are a group of cells working together to perform a specific function. Organs are a group of tissues working together to perform a specific function. So organs are the more complex of the, uh, of the two. And as if you're going to get bigger, then you're going to develop organs. And as we go through this class, we are working our way up the evolutionary ladder of complexity. So the ability to have organs and uh, another um, feature of these organisms uh, also uh, that we didn't see in the Cnidarians and Platyhelminthes, but we did see in the, the Nemertians, is where we see a one-way gut. All right. And it is lined with organs. The two-way gut is in and out. The mouth and the anus are the same opening. The food comes in and then um, gets digested and then and processed. And then and only then can the animal expel it and keep eating. Whereas with the one-way gut, you can see the pharynx, and which is a muscular uh, food manipulation organ, the esophagus to uh, move the food down once it's pro once it's um, uh, ground a little bit in the pharynx down into the rest of the uh, the digestive system the crop which is a muscular bag that and the gizzard both which grind the food into smaller particles allowing for a greater surface area and so these organs giving specialization allow for greater efficiency and continuous eating with the one-way gut. Okay, well, the next thing that we'll review is symmetry. And um, for the remaining phyla, as we've seen in Platyhelminthes and in the Mertians, bilateral symmetry, okay, except for Echinodermata, we're gonna see bilateral symmetry in, well, yeah, except for Echinodermata, most every other phyla is going to have uh, bilateral symmetry. Okay, so radial symmetry, if you remember, is uh, where you can go through the center, cut on any plane, and you'll find that both halves are equal. They look exactly the same. It's just like slicing uh, a pizza, uh, where you, if you cut it in half, you'll get two equal sides. Uh, Bilateral symmetry, you can only cut it down one plane, right down the center, and if you're going to get equal sides. If you cut it any other direction through the center, you're gonna have unequal sides. All right, and here we 
go. You can see features that show bilateral symmetry, some uh, exaggerated features that show you um, two arms on one side or on, on either side, two legs on either side, uh, two eyes and two nostrils on either side if you cut right down the middle. Okay, so you'll need to know these terms as well. Anterior, the head, okay, uh, that is the front, um, the top and the top and front leading edge. Okay, the ventral is the bottom, it's your belly, and then you've got the dorsal surface on the top, and the posterior uh, end is trailing. So you have the anterior is the leading edge, the posterior is the trailing edge. And same thing with the worms. Um, the direction they move is towards the anterior. Just think of a dorsal fin on a shark or a dolphin. Okay. And that is just a review of what we've been talking about. And now we'll go through um, some images of annelids and then uh, uh, that will be the end of this video. Okay, there are the objectives, you can look at that. Here's a giant earthworm, which is a uh, type of annelid. Okay, the, all the ones that you dig out of your garden, they can get quite big. Here's a polychaete, much like what you've looked at in the, um, in the lab when you're picking through the dock fuzz. Here are Christmas tree worms. Uh, not a very good picture, albeit, but um, uh, these were taken in a coral or sticking out of a coral. Here's a fireworm, which you might think that doesn't really, looks more like a caterpillar, but in fact it's uh, an annelid and um, we'll be able to tell the difference after the, this lecture. Here are some tube worms that are filter feeding. They have these two little filter feeding antennas and you can see that they've glued uh, little homes for themselves out of sand grains on top of this sponge. There's another picture of them, a little better resolution. Here's a picture from the of uh, tube worms from the uh, Mary Warrior. Um, you can see that they've reached a quite a lot, of, quite a high density, and they are filter feeding. This one is a type of worm called a spaghetti worm, and these little and these little um, feeding. Uh, appendages stick off and um, pick up organic material off of the surface. There's a sea mouse. And you might think, oh, that doesn't really look like a worm. But if you turn it over, you'll see that it does have the features of, of a polychaete, and you'll understand what those are by the end of this lecture. And here is a um, very, very small annelid a half a millimeter, which we'll see a nice video of in class. All right, there are three classes in Annelida. The Oligochaeta, or Oligochaetes, which are earthworms. There are the Hyrudinae, which are leeches. And you'll see that they also have, um, what would you call it, the little compartments, the little segments going across the body, you'll see the little lines that uh, show that there are segments. And finally, we have polychaetes. Okay, so these are the marine and freshwater worms. They're almost, the polychaetes are almost invariable. Well, they pretty much all are aquatic. All right, so 